BD, this is a hometown. And you and you grew up in in the Sunset District, okay. is that right? And um, when I when I first got here in in the summer, I took um, the the number seven bus out and snaked through inner Sunset, outer Sunset, yeah. went for a walk on the beach. So I, yeah. that's that's been my my little Sunset experience. Yeah. When did you first know that you were an actor? I first knew that I was an actor in high school. I was a musician before that, and so there was some kind of vibe about performing or. Whatever that creativity was, I had it. So that was that was acknowledged in some way, but it was did not seem practical to be a, a musician. Didn't seem practical to be an actor <laughs> either. But but when I became an actor, it kind of gelled for me that my uh, level of enthusiasm was so high that it warranted a, a real investigation. So this was at doing musicals in in high school. I was really lucky to have a, a very a specific relationship with the drama teacher, Zora Chanis, at Lincoln High School, who really made it happen for me, who, who recognized potential in me and who kind of pushed me forward and, and, and gave me opportunities that uh, even afterwards, I, I don't think I've ever had mentorship like that, you That's know, where, where somebody kind of really looked out for me and, and tried to guide me, guided me and my parents through this kind of perilous decision of actually considering this as a, as a vocation. And, and, and so then, th then coming out of high school, you, you knew and you, you followed that? Was that? I did, yeah. Yeah. I followed it and I had a brief, um, a brief hiccup because I, I did attend a local university mm -hmm. and th th I had the very opposite experience. I had a very kind of exclusionary um, kind of uh, I was completely thrown off by this because I was really spoiled. You know, Mrs. Chanis would choose shows to do for me right, and amazing. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And and um, yeah, I guess we can say that now, like four years later, that she chose shows for me. You know, it's like right, right. One. But um, uh, we and and so I had a really, I was I was really thrown off, and so I quit and I went to New York. And you said you said exclusionary, meaning that that I, I, I it was an educational environment, yeah. And yet there were no opportunities for me because there was always some kind of um, there there was some kind of unspoken code that uh, I, I needed to be cast racially specifically. Gotcha. And so then and but there were no there was no programming that right. would help me do that. Right. So may, they might have thought I had potential, but they were kind of like, "Yeah, sorry, we, right. we, don't, we don't have a lot of we don't have stories to tell." And, so yeah. can you do this? You know, be, I was in the chorus of a bunch of shows yep. and stuff like that, and it just I was at that point, to be quite honest, full enough of myself to feel like I was being shorted mm -hmm. or to feel like I was not learning. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that was really hard for me. I really didn't. I really I found that very discouraging, of course. And so then I I, I just kind of went to New York. During, during this time I was working as an usher at the Golden Gate Theater and right. so I, I had a kind of, I have, my education is very kind of street, kind of on the street kind of um, hands-on kind of experience. Yeah. Ushering for, for, for 20 different musicals at the Golden Gate, big national tours of famous shows and watching them every night is really a great education. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it replaces a college education, but it was really great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I didn't study theater. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I studied economics and political science, and then realized I circled back. I dropped out of a graduate program in political science, and because I just wasn't interested enough in those stories, I wanted to be uh -huh. a storyteller, yeah. and the stories got too narrow for me. Uh -huh. And I went back to sort of a, a spark and an impulse that I had remembered acting in high school and directing one show in high school. And I dropped out of my PhD program and said, I'm going to be a director. Yes. And that's what I did. And I, I, it was this, this was at UC San Diego. And I started directing in parking lots because it right. was San Diego. Oh, wow. So you yes. could like do that. And then I moved to New York. So yeah, but it is that kind of thing of like, I think this is who I am. Yes, that's how I, I really did feel that way. And I, and then I, there was a lot of outward questioning of that, you know, wait, sure. outward. And then was, I was always constantly second guessing myself about it yeah. because I thought, okay, I'm a fool or I thought maybe I don't know myself. And you're in, the, in that youthful stage where you don't know what there is to know. You just mm -hmm. feel 
and I was mm -hmm. kind of like, well, this is how it feels. And when I go to a quick Q and A with a with a bunch of actors that are upper, upper class men, and there's a, a, a professional actor that comes in and they ask questions about the career thing. How do I fit in there? Oh, do it only if you really, mm -hmm. really want it badly. Mm -hmm. Don't do it if you don't. But I do, you know. So I, since I, you know, I ticked off boxes. <laughs> I felt like, eventually, it felt like the right thing for me. Right, right. I know that my father, when I had this career change, yes. you know, just sort of saw. I think he envisioned that I would show up at. Port Authority bus terminal in New York with like a suitcase and become yes, a right. prostitute. Of yes, you know, of become a prostitute within minutes yes. in Times Square. Yes, um, of course. <laughs> you know, yeah, super, super scary for yeah. the family. Yeah. Sort of the arts. Why? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I also grew up. You know, sort of in that. You know, like like thinking that. You know, um, Amadeus Mozart uh -huh. as that kind of savant. Yeah. That those were the only people who should pursue the arts. Yes, right. And That's I right. felt, yeah. you know, I felt as a good student. Yeah. And you know, sort of like, you know, if you know, in that, and that, that I think, like, kind of dangerous phrase, like, like, you know, from a lot of teachers, of if you can do anything else, do it. Yes. Yeah. And it said, well, I can do other things, yeah. so I guess I'm not allowed to do it. Yes. But right. then I had to circle back. Yeah. And I guess I wanted to talk about that a little bit, just to get to know you, but also because you're doing this play, The Great Leap, which has in it a teenager, right. teenage character, who uh, right. knows that he's a basketball player. Yes, yeah. And sort of, and, and like, like demands that doors open for him. Yeah. And that he demands to be in rooms where he believes he belongs, maybe before the world believes he belongs. Yeah. And I feel like that character sparks then in your character, when Chang, mm -hmm. you know, sort of a, a, a life force that he hasn't experienced in a while. And I wonder or if ever. you... Or ever. Yeah. Right. I mean, he's from a completely different land. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and he, he does... Uh, well, first of all, he's not exposed directly... To, well, uh, no spoilers, <laughs> right. right? But yes, eventually throughout the course of the play, he does see that um, life force and recognize how it relates or does not relate to him. Right. And that's um, really uh, a very kind of mind-blowing kind of thing for a person to experience. Yeah, yeah. And I think it is sort of like that collision of teenager to adult, uh -huh. but also American to culture. Chinese. The yeah. culture is hugely important. Um, yeah. And I guess, I'd, well, who, who is Wen Chang? Can you talk a tiny bit about your sure. character? Sure, Wen Chang is, a, is, is what we would have, what we call an intellectual at the time, right at the, at the pr right prior to the beginning of the play. Uh, he's an intellectual who is being rehabilitated for his intellectuality mm -hmm. a, a, be, during the Cultural Revolution. So right there, that's a whole discussion yeah. about a, an, a, an understanding of artists and culture and, and intellectualness that in China, specifically historically, was um, just something we've never experienced here, right. I don't think. Right. We, we think we have. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. like to call out the fact that we don't support the arts enough and all that stuff, but it's not the same as actually being um, uh, abused or, right. or, or uh, told that you're less than. Right. Right. Or having to change you, right? Exactly. I was going to say, like, it's like it, it becomes dictated. Yes. Of like, you know, yeah. so it's it's not know thyself. Yes. It's we know yes. what is best for the whole. Yeah. It's not. It's not yeah. really that different from the coming out process. You know, mm -hmm. the, the process of like knowing that you are this, but then not being able to share it because uh, because you you know that you'll be completely. Um, uh, what's the I can't think of the ostracized, word but ostracized right? yeah. Yeah. yeah and and and, and Rebo, who whose parents ex experienced the cultural revolution uh, talks about that 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 kind of hiding it or pretending that you're something else or uh, uh, taking on different identities mm -hmm. to the extent that people did that because coming out as an artist mm. was was a really huge thing or an intellectual so Wan Chang is an intellectual and he um, finds himself kind of drafted into the the job of being um, the translator to an American basketball co coach coming to China to teach uh, Chinese uh, players basketball. And the, the Chinese government wants their Chinese basketball players um, uh, to learn the sport from an American. And so he's thrust into this kind of mm. uh, relationship uh, to the sport and to this man, um, which kind of is life-changing for him. And he b develops a great love for the sport and he develops a bond with this uh, particular uh, American coach. Mm -hmm. And then the events that, that 
unfold as a result involve a big, uh, what they call a friendship game that occurs uh, 18 years later, and the two men are reunited at that for that game, and the there is very complicated and um, really wonderful drama that comes about as a result of this game, and then the, the play climaxes in this big game. Yeah. And it's it's kind of great, yeah. you know. It's it's really a wonderful play, the way it all kind of spins forward, storytelling wise. Right, right, right. I mean, Lauren has called um, her play "The Great Leap" both a play about basketball and a basketball play. Yeah. And what and what does she mean by that? Yeah, I love that because I don't think we'll ever really know what yeah. she means. Um, I think I, I think she means. Um, well, yes. Uh, well, the, the 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 main fact of the fa the 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 idea that it's about basketball. So factually, we we see basketball. We feel the we we see the characters uh, interfacing about basketball. Basketball plays a huge role in the story. Yeah. And then I think as as far as be it being a basketball play, I think she has infused the play with basketball energy, mm -hmm. and that watching the play. If I think if she would say if it's done well, mm -hmm. is like watching a basketball game. Right. So there's energy that you know dialogue that goes rapid firing back and forth between characters is a little bit like a play in basketball. Mm -hmm. The way people defend one another, the way they, um, uh, you know, the energy of the yeah. play yeah. Sort of mirrors passing. basketball right. in some way. Right, right, and right. then she has written it. Um, she has a very interesting way of writing. She uses no, she uses no upper case letters. Mm -hmm. It's it's almost like poetry the way she writes, but it doesn't play like poetry when you read it out loud. Right. But she you can see the way she's broken up sentences and phrases in a way that uh, kind of gives it a kind of jagged energy mm -hmm. that's really cool. It's yeah. really challenging and interesting to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm I'm I'm. I'm always very struck. I mean, that, I mean, that for me is the fun of doing new plays and seeing them on the page the way that the playwright intended. Yes, yeah. You know, like like quite often, I think you know we've we've lost some of those artifacts in the like the published plays that yeah, I have yeah. in my bookshelf. But when you actually see like the score on the page, yeah. you get a little insight into um, certainly as a director how how the playwright intends that energy to be up on the stage. Yes, and you're saying right. like, like, like no capital letters, yeah. you know, sort of like a line that begins here is then taken by another actor to complete. Yeah. Like it is, it is like, passing. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's passing the energy yeah. and also stealing, you know, stealing uh -huh. the ball. You know, we went to um, a, uh, a rec center yeah, uh, right. um, last week and saw some middle school players in Chinatown. What was it? It was, the the local neighborhood team, and then there was also there. It seems like there are teams from all over the yeah. city in different uh, middle schools, right? All playing in this kind of tournament, right? That we saw a part of because yeah. we saw the, the two face-offs between two different the boys' team and the girls' teams, right? Um, and then you know they're going to eliminate and keep going, and then yeah. two, ta two teams will play each other for the finals or whatever. Yeah, and they had like twenty minute halves, and yeah. this, you know, and and for but me, really playing basketball. Yeah, no, it was great. <laughs> yeah. It was great. I mean, yeah. those were like young athletes that were young so athletes. serious that had been highly coached. Highly coached. Yeah, Technique, you know, you could see like everything. man to man defense. You could see zone defense. You yeah. know, every once in a while, our director Lisa Peterson kept on saying, "I don't understand what a screen is yet," yes, yes. and it's it, it, it's in the play and yes. show me what a screen is. And associate artistic director Andy Donald was trying to like point out, there, okay, you just missed it. It's like I did, I missed it. I just I haven't seen it. <laughs> there was a screen, yes, right. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, no, it's just... but it's all theater in a certain right. way. When you're watching, well, every anything that happens in life is theater if you really look at it. Mm -hmm. This is a very, you know, there's an audience sitting there. You're watching the act, uh, the uh, the athletes, yep. and there's an. A, a relationship to an audience of spectators that's very similar to to thea to theatrical. There's a lot of performance yeah, to it. Absolutely. Um, and well, and also I I always find as a, a, a spectator of sports or a spectator of theater yeah. that I start to sort of throw myself into the story. Uh -huh. You know, I was you know I was five ten. I'm now five ten. I was five ten in middle school. So I always like look at like oh there's the tall gangly yeah. boy. <laughs> I'm going to identify yes, with him. Right, right. Like I start to sort like of throw my, uh, exactly. Yes. I throw myself into the story. I start to start to see yes, myself right. in the people oh, in front of yes. me. Yes, and Tim Liu, who plays Manfred in the yep. play, and I were sitting next to each other, and he, we did that completely. That's me, he yep. said. That one is me. Yep. The one with the glasses. Right, <laughs> right.
right? Yeah. No, very much like theater. Yeah. Yeah, so interesting. You start sort of like carving out story uh -huh. where it's really just action, but you start to sort of, yeah, you start to create story because that's what I think biologically we're predisposed yes, right. to do. Right, yeah. and, and for a playwright to take a, uh, an event or a, a game or a, a thing like basketball and uh, craft it into a play yeah. and that is so satisfying to watch and to, uh, to play as an actor is really, is great. That's the, that's the ticket to storytelling, to yeah. taking things and transferring them, adapting them, um, uh, sharing them into this whole other kind of magical medium that we can manipulate and design and, and um, direct in a way that's, that illuminates and kind of goes beyond the, uh, the, the art form or, or the thing itself, right? right? So this is a play about basketball and it's, it's, it's more than just like watching a, a regular old basketball game. It has human drama. It has all this kind of, it has an arc. Mm -hmm. It has a, you know, so it's going somewhere and it right. has a destination. Yeah. And, and a basketball game has that kind of built into it, but all basketballs have the same destination, right? Kind of the same timing, the same thing. Right. This is like her taking humanity and kind of pressing it into a basketball mold. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it, I think she's done a really, really good job of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you've done this play once before. You did I it at, have, the, yeah. at the Atlantic Theater in their second stage, so in a 99-seat yeah. house. In a 99-seat house. And now in the Geary, a thousand-seat theater and just a very different room to tell a story. Yeah. What are, what are you already in rehearsal experiencing that is different? I mean, I know you wanted to do it's it again. So great. I wanted be, to do it because, again for this Because it is experience. so different, right? I yeah. did. I mean, yeah. I, it's such a rare thing. You, you never get to do this. Even if you go on, on a tour with a show, yeah. you are going to be in similar-sized houses. You're going to be working with all the same actors yep. and the same director, and you're going to get the same notes over and over again if you're stubborn <laughs> and and yet uh, here this is a whole new thing and every discussion the discussion with Meg the costume designer and mm -hmm. with Lisa and with the other actors is informed by my previous experience yep. and my great desire to be open and, and uh, reinvent and re-examine because the size of the house just that to start yep. with changes a lot of the dynamic for example, the, the smallness of, this, of, the, of the, uh, the production we did at Atlantic kind of dictated that, uh, for, in my, for particularly for my char the character that I play, it, it, it dictated that there was no costume change. Okay. Like it's because going off in that tiny space and coming on completely dressed differently, yeah. somehow it's a little bit more than it needs to be. Right, it almost lessens the experience. Yes. Here, yeah. There's a whole other world that can mm. happen where I leave the stage and I come back on and I'm dressed appropriately differently oh, to the situation, right? And you see it, and it makes sense. Yes. The set is it's that's a it's shifted. a larger production, right. right? And I would have thought earlier, oh well, I, this character never changes their clothes. Mm. This is part of the the thing. Now I'm like, oh, I see how I, I'm I'm not I can't I'm, I could get in the way of that by right. arguing the point, right? Just let, just see what happens. And then there's, a, there's, of course, finer points about what he's wearing and all that stuff. But the, the other characters, the other actors bring completely different energy. They can't yeah. help it. Yeah. That's humanity. Yeah. And that's fantastic. And um, I love that. And I, and I love these actors. And I love the ones that right. I did it with the first time. So I, I was kind of chomping at the bit. To, um, thank you for have, giving me this opportunity. I love uh, having this exploration on a on a on a piece that I already kind of know yeah. and trying to learn new things from it. Yeah, amazing. No, I'm yeah. so happy that you were able to do yeah. this. And also, I mean, how exciting also, it's at the Geary Theater, a theater that yeah. you that you went to when you were a teenager. Yes, I mean, I still remember vividly going with my, Mrs. Chambers' class okay. to see Equus with Harry Hamlin. Nice. And the, the, the big thing that we all remember from that, and a lot of my high school drama friends are coming to the play, of course, and we, we talk about this, but, but the one thing that I remember is that the three most, um, what's the word, the most unreliable boys, the ones that you would never want to be chosen for this, were chosen to sit on the stage. Ah. <laughs> so, you know, there is the, right? there's that original set of, of, yeah. of Equus and the uh, audience is sitting in three sides of the stage, almost like watching a boxing match mm -hmm. or something like that. And it's like, oh no, Bob Cooper and <laughs> Donald and, and, and Dan Knuckles were the ones. And, huh. and, and then simultaneous to that was a whole uh, uh, 
warning discussion about the fact that there was a nude scene. Mm -hmm. So we spent this whole, as high school students, we spent the whole play watching our friends watch the <sighs> play. And then the big notorious nude scene came up. And it was just so, it was wonderful because it was live. Right. And it was our experience experiencing something, understanding as audience members what that was like. I, I went to many plays at the Geary. I, I, I invested deeply in what those actors in that company were doing at the time it was a company and how they recurred and you saw them in different parts right. and what a magical kind of thing that was. And uh, so that legacy of this great theater that you are taking on now is, is very in my DNA kind of. Yeah. And I was also aspiring to be an actor. So, so coming full circle and being on the stage, I, I was lucky enough to perform a few seasons ago um, in The Orphan of Jow and it right. was it was really great. And to come around to the to the other thing about Mrs. Chain is talking my parents into being mm. an actor. Mm. So here we are, the, uh, many years later, <laughs> and my mother's hosting luncheons and receptions right. and bringing people and yeah. giving out flyers. And I'm going, look how we look. Right, right. How that happens. Right. Kids. It's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it gets better. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> oh, this makes me so happy. Okay. <laughs> great. great. We're done. <laughs>